Hello, everyone, and welcome to the monthly market wrap up with myself, Michael Noss from Stats Ed Trading. At the end of every month, we go through and we take a look at monthly charts, a really good zoomed out look. And I really like doing this because sometimes when we're trading on daily charts or even intraday charts, we get a little bit lost in the forest, so to speak, and we get to zoom out every month and take a look at the trees. So I already have a list of everything that I want to go over. So strap in, make sure you go to statsedtrading.com, sign up for the email list there, because I email these videos directly to you, along with the um, charts and a little bit of a blog about what I'm thinking about the markets getting completely for free. I don't spam you with stuff. It's just for that. So make sure you go to statsedtrading.com and sign up for that. Now, Without further ado, we're going to start here by getting into monthly charts, and we're going to start with Bitcoin. So a nice month up here, not nothing crazy, but still a green month after last month being absolutely wild in October. We had November, a nice little green continuation. We're still kind of struggling with these lows right here that I'm not worried about, but could act as resistance. Again, I am long Bitcoin, just full disclosure, my bias on that here, but you know, we're not, we're just breaking out. We don't look overextended. We do have some resistance overhead. And if we get through that, then these are the kind of levels I'm interested in. So 47,000 and then 69,000. Those are the two levels that are in our way if we continue to move up on this zoomed out monthly chart view. Now, Ethereum just still can't get going, still can't break out here. Yes, we had some good months in Ethereum, but if you look at this prior high and you compare that to that high in Bitcoin, just can't get going, can't get off the mat. So I'm more bearish on Ethereum, uh, bullish on Bitcoin right now. And with Ethereum comes a lot of those altcoins. You know, I know Solana had a really good month and has been breaking out here. Uh, AVAX, I think, has been doing okay as well. A little bit of a breakout here as well. But just not, um, not the strength of Bitcoin. This seems to be a Bitcoin and crypto focused rally. Uh, for now, at least. Now, into the rest of the currency, starting here with the Dixie, the dollar index. This is an evening star setup, if I've ever seen it. So if you want to go to Google and figure out more about that, it's essentially a big up move and one candle, followed by an indecision candle. So a doji, right, where the market moves up, moves down. It's kind of fighting, doesn't really know what it's doing, followed by a big move down. Traditionally, these moves create further moves in that direction. You can kind of see one right here. I don't know if I'd call that perfectly. And that led to a little bit of a, a pullback in this market. So could be, again, we're really zoomed out here. We're looking at monthly charts, but we could be in for another couple down months here on the dollar index. Now, some currencies that I'm taking a look at. It's Aussie yen finally broke out here. Uh, closed over this recent high anyway, not quite this high. So it still has to contend with the, the high that it did here in September of 22, but a nice little breakout of this consolidation it's been in for months, some continuation there uh, on Aussie N. Now the Euro, is this is gonna look uh, completely opposite to the Dixie because the Euro is a large component in that. So this would be a morning star pattern with a big push down, a doji, and then some continuation back up. So maybe some more strength for the Euro if there is weakness in the dollar. Now, bucking this trend a little bit, uh, even though it's US dollar CAD, so it's CAD denoted in US dollar, some weakness here today or this week where we had this little pullback coming in through here. So could see some continuation here as well. US dollar CAD, uh, it's obviously the US dollar is going to be very important for this, but also we need to keep in mind energy and oil because that's a large part of the Canadian economy. So let's pop in here to trade ideas. Let's take a look. Let's actually go into uh, into light mode here. I think it's easier to see. And let's take a look at some monthly charts here, starting always with the S&P 500. So for the SPY, nice little breakout. We had a nice end of day run. I know this is about monthly charts, but we were selling off a little bit after this bearish action yesterday, and we bounced from there after that. So that's interesting to me. Uh, we are just kind of hanging out right at this level. So I wouldn't be shocked to maybe see a pullback month or an inside month or, or something to that respect. 
but it looks like we are going to probably push up and continue higher. Now we're into December, all time highs by the end of the year has been a call a lot of people have been making. Maybe all we need is one more strong month to get us there. We are actually pretty close in this area. Now, if we go down the cap scale a little bit, and we look at the small caps where the S&P 500 is the large caps, this is the small caps. This level here for the IWM seems to have held. We kept bleeding through and then bouncing up and then bleeding through and bouncing up, and bleeding through and bouncing up. So that trend seems to be consider continuing on the IWM. It would be nice to see, I don't think it's necessary, but it would be nice to see the small caps kind of start to catch up to meet those large caps. Uh, XME, which is our metals and mining ETF, we are getting really tight here with a, a consolidation going on where we're getting tighter and tighter. So this is the metals for and mining ETF, which basically just means metals for you know steel and aluminum and all these things, gold and everything's in it, and then the mining sector as well. So this is a good all overall look at, hey, this is what's going on in this space of mining. And hey, it's uh, it's getting tight, nice little bull flag, so a big push up, and then it's just been consolidating sideways for a long period of time. So maybe we're going to get some continuation in the mining sectors. We're noticing the same thing in the XLB, and the XLB is materials. So it would make sense. It's going to be roughly the same. So these are more building materials and things like that. Getting very, very tight in this range, looking for a breakout to continue there as well. Now, XLF, and XLF is something that I always look at. It's a very important uh, sector and index to me because I don't think you have strong markets if banks are weak. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. And this $30 level in XLF has been very important. This was the high in 2020. It was the high roughly in 2018. It was the low in 2022 during the bear market. And hey, you know, breaking out here of this downtrend, obviously a good thing. When you're talking about financials, that should bode well for the overall market. Now, gold, you guys know I've been hammering on gold for a long time. We have all time we monthly closing highs in gold. Monthly highs. That's amazing. It's, it's all time. So nothing bearish about this picture. Now, we do have a lot of wicks in this area, which is why I always love to see when candles close. Charles Dow taught us that the closing candle, closing of the candle is the most important. Because we've been up here a few times and it's been higher, but all time monthly closing high for gold is certainly not a bearish thing for that. So I'm glad to be an owner of a whole bunch of gold names. Now, XLK, another all-time closing monthly high in the tech sector, right? None of these things are bearish to me. So although we may need a little bit of a rest in the market, nothing I'm seeing here is bearish. Uranium, breakout, not an all-time closing high, but a multi-year. When's the last time we've closed up here? Way, way back. Got to move my face out of the way. 2015, we haven't been this high since... 2015. It's amazing. The only weak sector that's really standing out is UNG. So there's no reason for me to be long this UNG right here until it can get going. I've talked about this a little bit. If we zoom in, I get a lot of questions about my, my opinion here. But if we say go to the weekly chart, and you look at this low right here, I need to see it retake that low and I need to see it do it quickly, like in the next week or so, uh, for a potential bear trap play. But there's nothing here that tells me that this thing is is going to bounce. We're not oversold anymore because we've been bouncing through highs. So this is the only like this is the only chart that I look at of all the charts that I look at each night where I go, Bleh, right? This is just puking. So that is a nice zoomed out look of these charts, trying to get these under 10 minutes, which is very nice. For more of this, make sure you're following wherever you're seeing this. I like, I love the likes, the comments, the subscribes. That really helps these algorithms on these different platforms uh, help other people find me. I appreciate that very much. And again, go to statsedgetrading.com for more of this content.